Hey, good afternoon. I am Mark May, and I wanted to talk to you about today the life of a systems engineer. So I thought the best way to do that is bring with me two systems engineers. So, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Mark. Uh, my name is Brian Hudson. I'm a principal systems engineer with Dell EMC. Ben Donaldson, systems engineer, also with Dell EMC. So, what's your day like? What do you do? Let's say any given day I get up around 10. No, no seriously. <laughs> Sounds like a good job for me. It, it is. It is actually great. You know, I spend probably, I spend a majority of my days uh, uh, with, you know, a couple of key customers I have in the, in the Columbus market. Um, but most of the, most of the time is, is really spent trying to really understand what their, what their objectives are, their business objectives, and, and match that back to some solutioning work, if you will, from an infrastructure perspective. So in broad strokes, that's kind of where we are. Ben, what do you think? No, absolutely. I mean, similar role in Cincinnati market, but I spend most of my time with a few key customers as well, uh, and most of my time is spent understanding their business and helping them solve business problems. So, what do you find that the customers get most out of your guys' time? Like, what value do you bring outside of, say, the internet? I think the most value that I contribute to my customers is the fact that I've got real-world customer experience. Before I was a system engineer, I was a customer. I was an admin, pounding on the keyboard like everybody else. So real world experience, and then actually telling it to them straight, you know. So. Absolutely, I think, you know, likewise. I think a lot of the uh, sharing other customer experiences, sharing experiences that we may have had as customers or integrators. Uh, my, background, my background came from more of a professional services side. So, you know, seeing the reality of what some of the, some of the technologies can or can't do and applying that to, to whatever problem we're trying to solve. So, you know, a lot of us, you hands-on keyboard, you know, they think one day they might want to be an SE one day, move forward in their career. What skill set do you think you guys would recommend they learn or understand to, you know, really make that transition from customer to bar, vendor, or partner? Sure. Um, well, so I've had a lot of customers ask me that specific question. And I think sometimes they look at it and they think that it's a it's all lunches and dinners and that's, the, the that's cool, all you do, right? Yes, that's it's all the lunches, all the cool dinners. We have stuff. like two scheduled tonight. Breakfast yeah. events like breakfast. this, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, it's more than that. So I spend a lot of time myself, uh, you know, researching different technologies, even outside of you know what are core Dell, Dell EMC products. Um, so it, it really comes to understanding more of the of the market that's out there and. and you know, having a, a bit of an appreciation for, honestly, a little bit more than, than what I may individually sell, because it really comes down to like integration pieces. So it's 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 a little less than, you know, knowing the text and the speeds and the feeds. It's more about building a practical solution. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, it may get romanticized into it. Like I said, it's just dinners and and uh, lunches, but it's a little more than that. So let's try to get a little more actual skill. You know, not, you know, what do you do? Yeah. Like what's, you know, I'm good at drawing on whiteboards. What's a, a tangible skill someone can yeah. work on? So for me personally, it was really a big transformation on the soft skills side. Soft skills side, excuse me. So basically, you know, when I was an admin, I was comfortable with the technology, using it, being an admin, using it, work with it every day. But if you were to say, Ben, what do you do for, for a living? I had a very hard time explaining that and articulating it to other people. Being able to actually explain the technology to somebody else that's when I feel like you truly kind of understand it and you can actually be good at this job as a system engineer. So, I mean, as far as that, you know, working on soft skills, being able to present in front of people, being able to have conversations about technology and that sort of thing. Uh, demoing, you know, being able to actually work and, you know, show off technology to people. So, since we're talking about presentation skills, what's, what's a good tip that you can give somebody about how to be a better presenter? You know, something they can do when they're trying to sell an idea or explain something. Yeah. So the best tip I can give all of you people out there is don't look at the slides, right? Look at the people you're talking to. That's the most important thing because whenever you're doing this and you're just having a conversation with the screen behind you, you've lost everybody in the room. They're on their, on their phones and everything else. So definitely communication with the actual audience, presenting to your audience. What about you? Uh, sure, certainly, certainly not just reading the slides verbatim, <laughs> but um, also uh, it may sound a bit uh, cliche, but listen. Listen a lot yeah. to you know, maybe what, keep, what keeps people up at night, um, and then uh, apply that to the technology. When I present something to a customer, I try to uh, put myself in their shoes from an operational perspective, but from a financial perspective. Um, so it's been kind of mentioned, these, these soft skills and applying those back 
and walking through the technology to get them to the aha moment. This is how this makes my life better, i.e., and, and there in turn, maybe the, the business better, and I can drive to the bottom line, improve the self worth within their own organization. Um, over and above the, you know, the, the soft skill pieces, um, I would say I don't get to spend as much time on a keyboard as I have in the past. Um, but staying sharp, at least on those technologies around, uh, you know, reading different blogs, uh, coming to events like Dell EMC World, or even other so, industry so knowing events. knowing how to read. Knowing how knowing to how read. Knowing how to read, that's very useful. Knowing how to read, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Knowing how to use a corporate card. <laughs> so those, those are my two takeaways, so for yep. read, corporate card. <laughs> yep. Um, but I mean, I think it's more about applying the technology, seeing where there's a technology enabler that may be productized into something, and making it into some, something more than the, you know, what it says on the back of the box. Because to your point, you can get a lot of things for speeds and feeds just off the internet. Yeah. So how much of what you do do you consider sales versus not sales? Obviously, you're a pre-sales systems engineer, and you know that involves some part of the sales process. But how much of that is sales? Well, I think we've had this conversation before. I mean, I think I kind of pride myself on selling by not selling, right? I give it to my customers straight. I talk about the challenges they're having, the actual solutions for them, how our solutions help them solve their business problems, and where they can't fit, where there's a gap, we talk about that, you know, be open about it. Um, those are some of the things I do. So it sounds like a lot of what you have to do is understand your customer's environment, where they are today, and where they want to go. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how many customers do you support, roughly? So directly I support two customers in the Columbus area. Um, and then in my principal SC responsibilities, I cover the entire, uh, I guess we call the Ohio Valley area. What's a principal SC? So a principal SC within Dell EMC, there's a couple le levels. Um, I guess I don't know how to exactly explain it, but we, we have... So, so you don't know what you do. I don't know what I do. You can read and buy you have a corporate card. And I buy I like lunches. It. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it without sounding pretentious, so I'll, I'll, I'll say it like this. When you look at the, the role of an SC within EMC, we have a couple different you know, hierarchies. Um, in the field perspective, the principal SC is the top of the field role. Um, we're expected to drive large campaigns, uh, very complex solutioning. So, you know, in, in general... You sound very pretentious. It does sound pretentious, I know. It's a... Uh, that's the life. Dude, what do you think? Does he sound pretentious? I mean, as someone who's not a principal, someone who aspires to one day be a principal, he does sound pretentious. So how does that work? If you fight. if you fight him, if you guys get in a we fight, match. and whoever wins becomes a principal, it's more collaborative, right? Actually, so I someday want to be a principal for for my local area, and the way I view it as, you are the go-to guy. If anybody has trouble with something, meaning a campaign or a particular situation, in the customer they've got a business problem that maybe we don't have a simple solution for. They bring in the principal, engage them as early in the campaign to get them involved sooner than later. So, moving from typing on a keyboard to drawing on a whiteboard, that's a big change. Absolutely. How did you, how did you like that, right? I, I always imagine going from technical to, or hands-on keyboard technical to, you know, vocal technical. That's a big change. Absolutely. For me personally, I actually hated it. I uh, went to an eight-week boot camp left home, left my family for, for eight weeks, and basically every day, eight to five, worked on presentation skills, worked on whiteboarding skills. Um, but those eight weeks was a very small, I've been doing it for four years now, and those eight weeks of my life is a very small sacrifice or a very large reward for me personally. So you like now? Love it. What about you? How did you, were you? I'm a horrible speller and not so good of a drawler. Capital letters. Capital That's letters are, are, you are your friend. And abbreviations, <laughs> and you just dot and trail off. Um, no, so, so whiteboarding is definitely a skill, you know, and mixing that together, as has been mentioned, being able to tell that story, you know, through pictures that you may draw and lines you're going to draw on a whiteboard that matches some sort of reality or what a product limitation may be. Um, and we can draw a lot of interesting things with lines and squares and arrows between them. Uh, but bringing it to life and, like I said, giving the aha moment of, oh, I see how these things connect and I see how it fits into, you know, some of the utilities or the ecosystem I already have. That's, a, that's, that's the fun part. So the hard part, hard question, what's the least fun part about your job? Mm. Other than buying dinner, eating too much dinners and... Yeah, the extra weight gain has been a big sacrifice for me as well, but I do what I can. Uh, the hard part for me is probably 
So when you're a technical salesperson, you're not supposed to have conversations around dollars and figures. You're not supposed to, you have a sales rep that does that for you. However, as part of the process, you tend to build a relationship with your customers. Your customers trust you, they confide in you, they know you're gonna to give to them straight. So a lot of times you get asked questions that are difficult to answer around pricing. I know the sales rep says this, but really, what is it? And that's tough for me, because So when my the, role when the is, customers try to blur that line between your role as a systems engineer and the salesperson's role, yep. that's hard. It I is. can see that being difficult. Well, but price is something we have to have some sort of conscious you know, effort to understand. I mean, we can't design these utopian environments that, that customers can never afford just because right. it is a really cool, elegant solution. Um, but to Ben's point, it can become awkward, especially as a, you know, a trusted advisor, which was ideally where you want to be, um, to, to get put on, hey, how, how much does this really cost? Um, and it's always a challenge, and I challenge myself to, to build something that I know a customer has either the means to afford, you know, straight out from a capital or a op, uh, OpEx perspective, or something that we can build a, a TCO around. So when we get involved with sales things, it may be more sales strategy around building out value to cost equations. You know, what, what awesome. sort of return does this give yep. and how much does it cost? Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap up. Any final thoughts or where people can contact you if they want to reach out to Ben? Uh, easiest way to find me is basically on LinkedIn. It's just Ben Donaldson with Dell EMC. You can find me there. I have a Twitter account also, but not very active on it. It's just Ben Donaldson 08. Bye. Yeah. What about you? Uh, for me, it's uh, much like Ben. You can find me on LinkedIn, Brian Hudson. Um, I have a Twitter account. I tweet some things. So my Twitter handle is vcommando. Oh, there's nice. a, Fancy. There's an interesting joke with that, uh, but... Uh, Which and it's not what you may be thinking. It's not what you may be I'd thinking. I'd love to hear more. <laughs> and I'm Mark May. You can find me on the Twitters at Cincy Storage or always online at virtualstoragezone.com. Thanks for spending the time.